Now, you blame the EU for what happened in Salzburg, but isn't the truth that this was a catastrophic failure of British intelligence and diplomacy and indeed politics as well? Well, actually, if you look at the readout and the media has covered various different aspects of it, it's clear a change was made very late on by the EU in their response. But to be honest with you, away from the melodrama of Salzburg, I think what we need to do is hold our nerve, keep our cool, continue to negotiate in good faith, and really press the EU to be clearer on what their objections are. I'm not talking about the dogmatic rebuff of the uh, economic partnership proposals. We need some clearer understanding of what the criticism is because we've tried to calibrate our proposals in a way that suits their uh, concerns and their interests. And at the same time, there aren't any other credible alternatives on the, uh, on the table from them or, or anyone else for that matter. But this is very confusing. Uh, Dominic Raab, because for months and months now they have been saying we won't accept cherry picking under any circumstances and we need a new solution to the Irish border and that's why this broke down. They've been telling us all along and they only did at Salzburg what they said they were going to do all along. Why were we surprised? Well, actually, that's just not factually correct. If you look at Jean-Claude Juncker's State of the Union just uh, days ago, a week ago, he said that the Chequers' proposals on the economic partnership will be the first step towards the negotiated relationship. But look, this is a first bump step. in the road. We'll hold our nerve, we'll keep our cool, and we'll keep negotiating in good faith. I think we need to keep these negotiations going. What we're not going to be is dictated to. And the UK is one of the biggest economies in Europe, if not in the world, We've come up with a serious set of proposals, 100 pages long, our white paper, um, covering everything from trade to security. We're not just going to flit from uh, plan to plan like some sort of diplomatic butterfly. We're going to be resolute about this and really press the EU to treat us with some respect and also on the substance to engage properly. And at the same time, we've always said our top priority, our overriding priority is a negotiated outcome, but we'll continue planning for no deal in case our ambition isn't matched and we've got some more technical notices coming out on Monday. Lots to talk about there. Um, if you go back to the next summit in November with a tweaked version of Chequers and you get the same kind of response, does the Prime Minister then have to walk out? Well, the, the next landmark or milestone, if you like, will be the October Council. And I'm not going to predict in advance what will um, uh, happen there, but I'm confident that if the ambition, the pragmatism we've shown on all of the detail, on the substance, uh, a set of proposals that gives effect to the referendum, that's faithful to the will of the British people, but also looks at what matters and what the EU is concerned about. If that ambition and pragmatism is matched, we get a deal. But if we just get this sort of computer says no uh, response from the EU, we're not going to make progress. So as the Prime Minister has said, we need some uh, give, some flex and some give and take, if you like, from the EU. And I'm confident that um, as the fallout from Salzburg uh, ebbs, we'll make further progress. Mm.